Okay, and I'll call the meeting to order at 6.04. And if it's, if it's okay with you all, I'd like to jump to um, item number four on the agenda so that Hannah doesn't have to sit through everything. Um, if that is, if you have no objections. That's fine. Hearing none, Hannah, you're on. Awesome. Okay, so I will make this as brief as possible. I am applying to the uh, state Massachusetts um, Shared Streets and Spaces grant on behalf of the town of Wheatley to install four bike stations across the town. Um, these bike stations can be used to repair. Here, I'll show, I'll share my screen. You can, um, these are publicly accessible uh, tool repair stations for bikes. So um, this is an example here of the Fix-It station. It's about four feet tall. You can rest your bike on top, like in this photo, um, and then use these publicly accessible tools to work on your bike. So it removes the economic barrier of casual biking around Waitley. Um, I know that there's a lot of biking that happens in town, and I think that this would be um, helpful for residents of Waitley. Um, one of the locations where I was thinking about possibly installing one of these racks was in front of the library next to the current um, bike rack. If you look at this photo, I was thinking, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but approximately um, to the left of the bike rack, um, it needs to be 40 or 45 inches away from the bike rack. So it would be here. Um, you can choose the finish of the bike rack so that it doesn't stand out. You don't have to have Barney purple if you don't want. Um, that would be good. There, <laughs> yeah, there are plenty of options here. You could choose any of these colors. You could also go with a galvanized or a stainless. Um, I can also show you the other locations if you would like to see um, where else I'm thinking about installing a bike rack. But really what I'm asking for from the library uh, committee is um, permission to install this bike rack in front of the building. Okay, does anyone have questions for Hannah? Uh, Hannah, before an installation is in, uh, taken place, you need to contact our town superintendent, Keith Bardwell. There, yeah, isn't, Keith there is an underground wire in that area. Okay, um, Keith and I have been in contact and he seemed amenable to the idea. I'm sure that he knows where the wire is. Yeah, he does know. And okay. is there any difference in the finishes in terms of their longevity? No, I don't think so. Do, do any of you have a preference for finish or color? I think it should match the bike rack that we have now in black. Black. I is that agree. a gloss black, Hannah? Uh, yeah, so these powder coats are a little bit glossier than I think what we currently have on the bike rack out front. Um, but truthfully, I don't think it would look all that different. Okay. And it'll probably it'll probably weather about the same. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, would be my guess. Um, I love the idea. Are you thinking more Waitley residents? I know there's a fair amount of people that come through Waitley riding. I mean, how would somebody see this? Are they? Who are you trying? What's the audience? I guess certainly. Yeah, so I think with a lot of the really serious bikers, they're likely to already have their own tool set. This is more for the casual biker, somebody who's local, somebody who's maybe just dipping their toe into biking, giving it a shot for the first time. Um, I think that it would really be well suited for local residents of Waitley in that way. Okay. So in terms of color, one thing that I'm wondering is if we wanna be promoting this to an audience that might not be aware that this is an option, is blending in the best idea or is being brighter and therefore more obvious the better idea? I think that it would be great to include some signage as well. Um, this grant only funds the equipment part of it, um, but in the future, that's something that I would like to see. I just don't have a specific plan for implementation of signage for the actual bike racks. What are the colors of the other bike racks gonna be? I haven't heard any input from any community members about what they want the colors to be. Um, I was just gonna uh, veer towards galvanized or stainless, um, but I don't think it really matters. Hmm. Any other questions or comments? 
I think it's awesome. It's a good idea. I think whatever color you pick, whatever finish, um, and I think we'll figure out signage or whatever down the road. I mean, okay. I, as, a, as a biker myself, um, you see these things. Having th that's how I found my where I live in Waitley. Oh, cool! And is riding the area. So yeah, yes, um, yes. People will find it. I think okay. it's an awesome idea. Great. Yeah, thank you. Are there any other comments Thanks, or questions? You. If not, if Hannah, if you could just uh, close the screen. Certainly. Thank you. And uh, I need a motion to uh, allow this to be constructed there. I motion that we allow this to be constructed there. And we I need to. I will second that. Go ahead. All right. And a roll call vote. Bob? Yeah, yay. Cynthia? Yay. Jim? Yes. And I vote yes. Hannah, you got it. Awesome. I'm so excited. I can't wait to actually make this happen. Hopefully we get the grant <laughs> and I'll keep in touch. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Okay. All right, so we will um, go back up to old business where um, a lift construction progress report I have a, yes, uh, if you would, please, I have a, I have a word. I uh, received the minutes from the last meeting, which I was unfortunately unable to attend. And I noticed in the first sentence that our town administrator had asked the trustees to establish a um, approval process for the, any change orders that would come down the line. Um, and reading further on in that, in the minutes, um, I think there's probably been some misunderstandings on the change order process. I'd just like to take a moment to review how these things work. They begin with the general contractor who is facing an obstacle that he feels was not covered in the original architectural plan. Once he identifies that, he communicates that information to the architect. The architect gives me a heads up and I inform Bob Klinger or he informs me and we get Bob Smith into the, this is all informal. This can be emails, text messages, phone calls. We just know something is coming down the road. Um, and when Bob Smith gets it, he probably is gonna bring in Brian Dominia as well. Um, so the, the architect will then ask, the contractor and there's back and forth between the two of them is this legitimate what are your options how are you going to fix it how are you going to accomplish this and and of course we are all in the loop as well all of the communications are all documented between the architect the contractor and the clerks of the operation the next step would be for the if, if it's a, if it's legitimate and and I'll get back to how Bob and I interceded on the last one in a moment. The contractor will submit the cost of what he needs to accomplish this change order. It might mean hiring a subcontractor for a specialty like asbestos abatement. Those documents follow to Bob and I. We review them. We scrub them down, see if there's any other options. Um, and then we turn them back to the architect. At the same time, Bob Smith has this, and he's sharing that information with Brian because Brian's watching the money. He's got to make sure there's enough money in there to, to make this work. And once that is done, then a formal change order starts with the our contractor to the architect, to us. We all say, yep, that's, there's no other options. Go ahead with it. And that's how the process works. And I think judging from the minutes in the last meeting, um, there was some misinformation. We do not have the option of negotiating with the, co the, the contract. They work for the architect, the architect works for us. The architect controls all of that information. Okay, that's what they get paid for. So that's, that's how change orders happen and are executed. So 
back to Brian's statement, we need a system, but we've already got one in order in place, and that's what we do. Okay. I want to just cycle back to the first change order. It came through from the process I just explained. It got to my desk and Bob's desk. We looked at it and he says, you know, this asbestos quote looks high. Um, well, let's ask for another number. So we went back to the architect. We didn't go to the contractor, to the architect, because she controls it. She went back to Josh and said, Josh, the trust the clerks want another op, another bid. He got another bid, and guess what? It was half the cost of the original. So that's how we did our job. We got the price down to where it was almost it was budget. It was a couple hundred dollars over. And that system worked very well. In that same change order was the fire alarm system. That followed the same path. And when it got to our desk, we looked at it and we said, wow, this thing is four times what we had budgeted for. So back to the architect. And I told her, we got to come up with a plan here to make this thing work. And the plan was that Bob Klinger would work with John Hannum. I would work with the inspector's office. Bob Smith would work with Brian Domina on the, on the costs. And together, we all came up with a plan. The building inspector agreed to just have the alarm system just for the elevator and not the entire building. He's willing to do that. John Hannum did not want to hold this project up, so he's willing to scale it back. And the I also asked for two additional two bids, other bids, one from uh, Mark Lucy here in Whateley, and one from uh, Hackworth LLC Alarm Systems in Southampton. And I I think Hackworth has responded. I haven't seen those documents, um, and I don't know if Mark has or not. So that's how that change order is working through exactly the way it's supposed to. And then when we get a final result, we will bring this to the trustees, not for their approval. They, they, they can't approve this stuff. This, this is done at the arc from the architect and inform you what is going on. So it's an informational thing. Okay. That's, that's what we're hiring the architects to do. So, so that, I hope that has answered the questions on, on change orders. Are there any questions at this point? All right. In part two of my, my uh, reading down, um, an extra meeting was required. Um, you know, we're a busy group here. Bob Smith is a, is a track coach. As the days get longer, his hours are gonna be extended. And he travels out of town in an extra posting a meeting, finding a, a Zoom date, executing it is, is a lot of work. Bob Klinger has business interests all over the East. He's out of town, he's in airports, and uh, he's, he's just a busy, busy person. And he's well, he does a lot of work on, the, on this elevator thing. He's down there looking at it every day. Sheila Samansky. Every morning at 6 a.m., she drives by my house. She's probably been up for two hours. Drives to Bernardston, goes to her job. She's, right now, that company is hit in the middle of a merger and acquisition. She's in charge of all that. She works her heart out. She probably works more than eight hours. I bet she does, knowing her. Back to Hatfield, caring for a 90-year-old mother for a few hours. Then she finds her way back to Laurel Hill Maybe has a bowl of popcorn with her husband and goes to bed and does the same thing the next day. So her time also is extremely valuable. And to burden her with an extra meeting, I think is, is really not fair to her. Myself, hey, I spend three mornings a week in the Cooley Dickinson Hospital and I spend the afternoons recovering. Sometimes I just don't feel like doing much else. So I'm asking that we go back to our monthly meetings and, and just, and I will offer, personally offer to any one of you board of trustee members to give you a personal tour any Sunday afternoon of your, of your wishes. I can only do it one-on-one -on -one because we have open meeting laws to respect. But if you'd like to do it, just call me, I'll meet you there. You have keys, you can get in anyway. I will give you an up-to-date 
progress report on what's going on. Any Sunday you want, any time you want. So maybe that is a compromise, sitting down to an extra Zoom meeting in a row. That's it. I yield my time. <laughs> I don't think that the extra meeting was not trying to be respectful of anyone's time. What, it, we, what we were trying to accomplish by adding something else in was simply being able to keep the project moving forward as opposed to if something needed to be discussed or voted upon or we had to be looped in instead of waiting for a month if you know say something happened the day after the meeting you know the regular monthly meeting then then you're waiting four weeks before you reassemble the group and it was all in the interest of moving things forward it wasn't trying to be disrespectful to anyone it wasn't trying to not say that everyone is busy because all of us are busy and i don't know that we need you know i that that was not the intent was to make people busier the intent was to move it forward so i feel like that isn't being you you can do whatever you want you're you guys are the clerks of the works but it seemed like it was going to be a helpful thing for the project for you know so that we don't gum things up and keep it moving forward but i i don't care any comments bob or jenna My comment, because I was part of this last week, uh, or two weeks ago, excuse me. Um, I'm familiar with construction. I'm not familiar with everything that's that's required on the public town level. Um, one of the issues that that. Is, I think is going to come up tonight. I haven't heard this yet, but I haven't seen anything um, about what's going on. Any have we gotten any new information from the architects? Yes, I, I, I spoke with Aviva this morning. Okay. And I was going to wait to number two under new business. Okay. I I'm just I'm I'm not sure is. Do we have to set it for two weeks, or if we get something that requires everybody's attention, can we just call a meeting? Is that a possibility? All, yeah, all I need is 48 hours. I, I, have to, I have to get the meeting to Amy Schrader so that she can put in the town offices and on the website 48 hours in advance so that if I got it to her by you know two o'clock on a Monday, we would still be able to meet at six o'clock on a Wednesday because we would have the 48 hours. And that's that's um, that's do easily doable. Does it need to be a set every two weeks? That's one of the questions I had because it there was a, a flurry of activity and then we're waiting. Yeah. And when we get to number two, we're going to still be waiting because I, I literally have nothing to report. And I will okay. tell you, I will, I'll explain the nothing in a minute. Yeah. I think, I think Bob, you're absolutely, Bob's clear. You're absolutely correct. If something is critical, we, we can call an immediate meeting. Otherwise, there's no need. Okay. I'd like to um, proceed in that way. I don't think we took a formal vote um, at the last meeting. To have it every other week. I think it was a sense of the meeting, but if we if we go to the um, just give me forty eight hours to get it posted, um, I, I'm fine with that. Again, I just need the forty eight hours. Cynthia, while we still have you, how does how do you feel about that? I don't care. I, I, it was only done because it seemed that there were going to be timely things 
and waiting four weeks didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, I mean, we can, if you want to try doing it for, you know, say, okay, in, in two days, we're going to have a meeting. People may or may not be available. That's absolutely fine. You know, we were able to get a quorum tonight. Um, I, I, my only interest is to move this project, which has been so long in the works forward <laughs> and to not have our once a month schedule yeah. gum that up. Uh, otherwise, I honestly, yeah, I've got other meetings. I've got work that I'm yeah. supposed to be doing. Right. You know, all, I, I don't need, I don't think any of us need to have our little violins out playing a sad yeah. song. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for that. Cause it, I, I keep thinking to myself over and over, we're almost at the end of February and we have March, April, and if this thing, if we can hold it to schedule, we're done mid-May. If we can, if we can just get this thing done. So if, if you're okay with that, I'm okay. How do we do this, Bob? I'll defer to you. Do we need to, we didn't really vote on it in the first place. So do we Correct. need to? I think, I think it accomplishes exactly what Cynthia wants. If we, um, if we go to the, um, if there's a major event um, in terms of a change order, um, we can conduct a, a meeting um, within 48 hours, uh, which I don't think would slow the process down. Um, I mean, it, technically, even if you had a, a meeting scheduled, I mean, something could happen last Wednesday and we we're not meeting until tonight. So I mean, it, it's just a dance. It's just a dance. As long as we abide by the open meeting law, we'll be fine. Okay. So we just need that 48 hours. I'm right. good with that. I think we should also acknowledge the fact that the, the change order process I just explained would supersede what was, what was discussed in the last meeting. Right. Okay. okay. So if there's nothing else on, um, I don't know if, if, if anybody's been in, I know Bob and I were in the library this morning and, um, Things are, are, are moving. Um, I will proceed to talk about the change order. I called the Viva so I could discuss the change order regarding the fire alarms. Um, two quotes came in. One was a quote for simply the, the basic plan, which would be for what is required when you put a lift in. And then the other quote was for the whole thing. And I think that was Goodless maybe. So yeah. Cack, Cackworth and Goodless are the two. Um, Busse did not respond as of now. Okay. And um, because they're they're not oranges to oranges and apples to apples, um, Aviva's got to do some work to get either Hackworth to do the whole thing so that the bid is comparable and they can look at the two. But the Hackworth, the Hackworth bid on the basic plan required by law is just a couple hundred dollars over. Um, what we were, but, but that has not gone through Josh completely yet. Aviva has not heard from Josh, so that's on hold. Then the bump out, the change, uh, the the bump out with the change of of the height and the um, the different uh, kind of um, um, not molding, but trim that is was going to be involved in that. Josh has the architectural drawings that Aviva submitted to him last week, and there is no no. Um, movement on that so there is there is no uh, the change orders are out there but they don't exist in terms of something that we need to look at yet cynthia are you familiar with these the bump out issue no okay what happened is when they demoed the, the lower level opening they discovered at the ceiling height at the rear of the shaft there was a concrete girder that spans the whole front of the library, okay? It was embedded and it protrudes about three inches into that shaft. You can't touch that because it's holding up the front of the building. It's a really critical structural piece of the building. So the solution is to take all of the mechanicals and move them out into where the Duda room is three inches, okay? And that three inches will, will solve the problem. It will also give us room 
to relocate a steam pipe and two water pipes into that area. So uh, that that's that was the dilemma on the um, on that piece. Okay, so there will be a change order coming through on that. You'll see it. Right, it's not ready yet. We'll have no. We'll have all of the information. So where that's are, where are these change orders to be seen? You you mentioned me? that we can. You I said that you. we can see all these change orders. Where are they? Where are they? Yeah, you, you oh. mentioned that we can see them. So where does one see the change orders? Oh, well, um, how would we do that, Bob? Well, th generally the change orders um, are sent to you two. Yeah. Uh, then, and I'm, co I'm copied in on them. Yeah. And then I wait to hear from the two clerks as to how we're going to proceed because you did not approve of proceeding with the with the um, asbestos one or the electrical one. Yep. Um, then um, once Aviva makes it an official change order, it would then be available. Right. But it just it exists in the ether until you two have said, okay, we can proceed and she's put it in writing as a change order to the contract and okay. the change order also of course there's overhead and whatever it is is five percent or whatever up yeah. uh, above and beyond the cost of the change order yeah. and that yeah. has to get and then all of that appears and a, a, the statement comes from the architect to brian domina's office um the the statement for payment the a a i a yes, um, yeah. Yeah. forms okay and that's that's the way that brian wants to proceed with that yeah. So until it exists, Cynthia, it doesn't, it's just in the ether in discussion. So until, until the change order actually becomes the change order, um, it doesn't really exist. It's the idea that there's one out there coming. Yeah. So right now we have two out there coming. Yeah, I was just responding to the fact that it's been mentioned a few times this evening that we can see them. And I just don't, that was why I was asking, where can we see them? Was right. in response to what had been brought up. So, you know. Until Aviva, until Aviva sends. Until they've been, order. you know, d gone through this process. Right. And been approved. Right. Then, then potentially they're available to yep. the board or to just anybody in Waitley or. Uh, how does, you know. I don't know the answer to that. I would assume that because they're public documents, they're available to anybody in Whaley, but I'd have to ask Brian okay. about that because I don't know if when they get a bill like that, if that is, is something that anybody in the public can look at the itemized. I don't know the answer to that. I really don't. Well, I mean, ultimately, I don't know that it's imperative for the people who are not clerks of the work or the chair, i.e., you know, Sheila and Megan and myself, I don't know that it's imperative that we read these things as much as we understand what the change orders are and sort of get a summary of them. Like, you know, Jim was just saying, we're going to, because of this cement girder, we're going to move things three inches forward into right. this room. And that will make it so that the building doesn't collapse and the needed works have a space to be. Right. So that's, I mean, like, that's all I need to know, I, or I feel I, I can't speak for Megan or Sheila. Okay. I actually, um, Aviva sent me and Jim and Bob copies of the drawings that she submitted to Josh, because he has to get the drawings for this change first and then do his estimation, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I can send you those if you'd like. I think there's five pages of, of drawings. Um, I, I think they're still in my phone, so I can send, I can, I'll forward them to you if you'd like to look at them. I, I, I don't, unless I need to make a decision or to weigh in, I don't know that I'm, I'm not trying to make things gummier or more complicated. I was just responding to hearing that they were available to see, and it sounds like they're actually not quite, but that's fine. Unless I need to do something about them, why, I don't know that I need to see them because it's just one more. Okay layer in a very layered okay situation but i can assure you that that if the change order um 
is the, the small kind of change order that we've allowed Bob and Jim to approve. We're at the next meeting, we would have, we would tell you about whatever it is, you know, bumping something out three inches and therefore changing the trim that goes around it. Um, they're very, what I, I'm impressed with is, is that they're very um, conscious of the architecture inside the building as well. And that they wanna mm -hmm. keep things uh, as, as close to identical with arches and so on and so forth. Um, so I've just been impressed by that. So I, I think um, we just have to wait mm -hmm. and see. I was surprised by Aviva saying that they don't have anything yet, but um, I don't, okay. I, it's, it, I, it's coming, it's obviously coming, but work is proceeding. Nothing, that has not stopped the process in any way. The downstairs, uh, what was the women's bathroom is completely blown out now so that it can accommodate the, the changes for um, um, ADA accessibility. And um, there was discussion with Bob Klinger and me and Aviva and the um, contractor about the, the impossibility of matching the tile on the floor of the bathroom because it's a really sort of a, a post-war, immediate post-World War II kind of tile that probably doesn't exist anywhere except in demoed buildings. Um, so um, that's the kind of thing that, that's gone on and we can keep you posted on all of those things at, at a regular meeting. And then if we have a big change order situation, we can just try to get the meeting for um, 48 hours and just, sure. you know, hopefully it just if like 15 minutes, boom, boom, approve or not approve. And um, yeah. that way we don't have to be too bad, okay? Um, I asked I asked Cindy um, just to come and and let us know how things are going in terms of library operations while um, we're under construction. Cindy, you still there? Yes, I'm here. Would you like to tell us how um, things are going under construction? Well, what would you like to know? Patrons well, are still coming in. Good. Saturday was one of our busiest days we've had in a while. We had 40 patrons through the doors. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, so I've just, every patron that comes through, we're just apologizing to them for our appearance because of the construction. They've been understanding about it. We're trying to proceed, you know, normal, as normal as possible with library services. Everything's covered in a layer of dust. I don't know what else you want me to say. No, I just I just was hoping to, to hear that patrons are coming in and the library is being used and and um, I guess that's that's good. Um, anything else that you need? Yeah. Anything that you need because well, of the question came up about cleaning and who is responsible for cleaning up after, for example, the family bathroom hadn't been cleaned. There was a lot of concrete and other de construction debris in there. And the question came up as to, well, why didn't the contractors clean up after themselves that bathroom? And I said, I would bring that question up tonight at the meeting because I didn't have an answer for it. Um, but it's been cleaned I can, now. I can ask Josh Kenny to take care of that, have, have the plumbers clean that up. All right, and then I guess we need to find out whether or not it's in Josh's contract that they're doing the post-construction cleaning or are we contracting out ourselves to do a post-construction cleaning? I don't, I don't know. And if the that's light, all right. And the lights are continually on in the duty room because there's only one light switch to shut those lights on and off and it's been taken out. So is there a way that they can make a temporary switch so that at the end of the day, the lights can be shut off so that the lights aren't constantly on? I don't know the answer to that. 
We can find out where the breaker is and have have them do that every night. Switch it off the breaker. All right. Yeah. But then that leads up to the point that when we do redo the electrical, maybe we should get a double switch put so that if you're coming into the community room from the basement, there's a light switch right there to turn them on and off. So you don't have to walk over to the other doorway to turn them on and off. I think it's our intention to take a look at um, the elect some electrical issues in your office and elsewhere in the library after the project is over. Yes. Okay. So, all right. I mean, so, I don't have, I really, oh, go ahead, Cynthia. So I'm just, so I'm hearing you say that the collection is covered in a fine layer of dust and that that's the entire so, collection. The whole library, when you first walk through the door, the table out in the hallway, it's in my office, it's in the rotunda area, it's in the, it's all, the whole library is covered in a layer of dust. So there, there was no true containment um, masking that was put that is protecting the collection that was put in place at the beginning of this. The area, the plywood, the area. Go ahead, Cindy. It's a plywood area with a plastic on the top that during the day when they're working, it's open. And then at the end, of, or at least upstairs, and then at the end of the day, they put another piece of plywood over it so that people can't go in there. Well, that was something that I had brought up um, a few meetings ago was wondering about how we're protecting the collection. And I think from what the description is, is that we're not truly protecting the collection, which is not a great thing to hear. As a trustee, I have to say, I'm disappointed about that. Like a fine, you know, dust is so insidious and it's not good for the books, cement dust or what, what, whatever, plaster dust, whatever it is, it's not, it's not a healthy thing. And our value of our collection is, is really what makes our library. So um, I'm wondering if there's ways that we can do better or Josh and his team can do better moving forward. Because if we're talking about three months of this, um, it's not healthy for the humans. It's not healthy for the collection. And it's, uh, I'm sure not healthy for the patrons. So sort of three strikes. And I, I don't know what the answer is, but clearly libraries all over the country have construction projects happen and they find ways to care for everything in the building from the people to the collection. And I think that that is um, like hearing that there's a layer of dust over everything is... Um, not great, in my opinion. Jim or Bob? Uh, the, the, the bulk of the demolition work is complete. I'd say all of it's complete at this point. And they're now, uh, they'll be doing, installing the, the framing and the wood entryways for both shafts. But the, the concrete cutting is all behind us. Um, so I don't see them generating an awful lot in the future. Perhaps when this project is done, we'll put a professional cleaner in there and, and go through the whole place. So it wasn't something that the architect addressed preemptively, and it wasn't something that the builders addressed in an, a, a comprehensive way. Well, all I can say, Cindy, is that it, it was, they did probably the best they could. They, caught, they cordoned off the two entryways, they covered it with plastic, Plastic on the floors downstairs, um, and 
they probably just did the best they could do. And this is a difficult project when you're cutting concrete into a building like this. You know what? I am fully aware that it's a difficult project. I am also very aware, having a sister who is a library specialist, who, who that's her degree, um, that there are ways to address this. So I'm aware of both things. And what I'm aware of is that it didn't get done for Waitley Library. And that is what I'm addressing and what I am not happy to hear about. Um, I'm not saying that you can do it 100%. I think that that's almost virtually impossible unless the collection is moved. But um, the description that we were just given, that there is dust over every thing means that it wasn't done well. So whatever they did was done mediocrely. Or I could use other language, but. I was in the library today and there was a layer of dust. What I don't know is what's acceptable. Um, one could say no dust is acceptable. I, I, I don't know. I'm happy to take more involvement. Um, I feel like our two of our main rooms could have been cordoned off. Like we could have literally shut. Have you been in the library recently? I haven't. I would love to meet you down there and you take a look and tell me what you think from your own opinion. Okay. Um, there, was, there was a layer of dust. Um, could we do better? Uh, having been through many construction projects, I'm happy with what Josh's people are doing. Could they do better? Yes, we could all do better. Um, I'm happy personally to be a little more proactive and meet you down there, meet Cindy down there. Uh, I am back around now for hopefully the rest, the duration of this project. Um, I don't think we have, I certainly don't think we've compromised anyone or the collection. Um, do we need to take care of it? Yes. And what do we do for that? I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation with people. What's the best way forward? Um, I was hoping it would have been a little better. It certainly could have been a lot worse. So. I, okay, well, let's not go to the lowest comment, you know, like the, the least thing. Let's try and, and have the bar be high, right? Like have, have. Well, we are best. dealing with, we are dealing with the lowest bidder on the job. We have to remember that. We took the lowest bid. We did. You're right. And, and, and we, have, we have to. Right. So it, it, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to, I'm happy to chip in. I, I know I can't do everything, um, but we are where we are. How do we get through this? Yep. I, I don't have the answers, um, but I would, if this is the level of the work that is being done because of having accepted this specific bid and these contractors, then I think we need to outside of them, come up with some solutions that are going to be appropriate. And I don't know, you know, Jim's indicating that there's not going to be any more dust. Well, you know, deconstruction creates dust and so does building, you know, cutting pieces of drywall creates dust, cutting, you know, wood creates dust. Like all of those things are going to create dust. And I'm guessing they're not doing it outside because they then have to have cords going out and, and they have weather issues and safety issues. So I'm, I'm sure that that's not being done or won't be done because that just adds to the cost. So we are gonna be facing 
more stuff. And I think we do need to creatively come up with ways to address it for the benefit of this building that we're trying to improve. You know, the, adding a lift and creating problem, other problems, you know, like we want to move forward, not like two steps forward, one step back, right? Like that's the goal. So anyway, um, I, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of filtration systems out there. There's a, there's, there's a lot of options that exist. And um, we have two rooms that are easy to close off. Not that patrons can then use them, but in terms of just making them less dust accessible. How do you want to proceed? Um, I guess I should come pop down and see what my thoughts are, you know, in terms of that. And I don't know what Sheila and Megan's thoughts are, but I, you know. It has to work for getting the project done, but it also has to work so that we don't create a, an expensive situation at the end of this too. We already have an expensive situation with the, the fire, um, the alarm notification system that we're gonna be addressing. So I, I don't wanna keep piling things on our plates. And but I do think it's valid that we all think about how do we, how do we work towards the best solution? I think if everybody, right, everybody's working together towards how do we get there, um, is the best opportunity to get there. Right. So that that's why I offered to meet you down there. Is there dust? Yes. Is it? Um, there there is dust. I, I'm not going to quantify the amount because right. I don't everybody's tolerance everybody's level is going to be different right but barriers with zippers can be put in and so that the rooms can be accessed and yet they can be much more closed off than just having a room be open that's that if if that's a if that's a choice if that's a decision that that yeah I mean that's something I, that, I'm just I'm just saying that's yeah. one of I'm sure many many possibilities yep um and so anyway i i can email you and we can figure out a time sure and um go from there that works okay um, i know everybody's been this is an extra meeting and we've lost our director and i know i have to jump out okay so um i guess we'll adjourn until our regularly scheduled March meeting. Yep. Okay. Thank okay. You. Good night. Good night. Good night.